Ciao a tutti e bentornati, io sono Manu e questo è Italy Made Easy, but today I am not here to teach you anything specific about the Italian language, but I'm actually here as your language coach in general, so hopefully this video applies to anybody learning any language. Actually, no, there is a little uh, disclaimer. What I'm about to tell you today is something that I, I believe is going to really make a difference in your language learning journey, but there are two conditions that, uh, that I'd like to clear before you watch any further. And one is that the language you're learning is kind of like a European language. What matters really is that the script that the language you're learning uses is the Roman alphabet. That way you're not struggling with two things. One is the language that you're trying to understand and two, or number one really, is being able to read what you're supposed to read as quickly as possible so that you can learn. So what I'm about to tell you applies to European languages like, you know, uh, Spanish, French, German, Swedish, any of those languages, okay? Secondly, this video assumes, assumes that your native language is English. Now, this channel is for English speakers wanting to learn Italian and of course you're more than welcome to watch my videos and if they help you, I'm so grateful. But my experience, there are so many channels on YouTube that uh, are doing Italian. What I like to do is specialize in what I know I'm good at and that is teaching Italian to English speakers. Why? Well, because I've been teaching Italian to English speakers for more than 20 years, so I know the mistakes that you're likely to make. I know the way you are going to think and the reasoning behind whatever you are going to assume about the Italian language and then I can clear that very quickly and that's why so many of you guys comment on how effective my videos are because I, I know what I'm doing when it comes to that. So today's video is for people who've been studying Italian for more than a year, sometimes two, three, four and who are still struggling and they are about to either give up or assuming that they will never be good or are just angry because they, they kind of say, come on, I've been doing this for two years and I still suck. Suck is your word, not mine, okay? But yes, I understand what you're saying and in this video, I'm gonna do something different. I usually, I, my videos are very proactive. I tell you what I suggest that you do. In this video, I'm actually going to point out what you're doing wrong. I will create a second video, don't worry, where I tell you what you could change so that you do it right. But let's get straight into the first thing that I believe you are doing wrong if you are not good at the language that you're learning yet after a whole year of study. The first thing is that you are probably believing the old myth that you're too old to learn a language, but that's not the main problem. The main problem is that you're using it as an excuse. Don't do that, please. Yes, there are facts, there, are, there is science that does say that children under the age of eight are, their brain is more malleable and they are ready to assimilate the sounds of a new language. So yes, if you learn a language as a child, you will end up speaking it like a native speaker. As an adult, it's a lot harder for, for us to sound like native speakers, but who cares? Really, who cares? Being fluent does, has nothing to do with sounding like a native. You can be extremely fluent and not sound like a native. Do not confuse the two things. So do not use the fact that you're too old as an excuse to not learn a language. The other excuse that you could use is, well, but because I'm old, my memory doesn't work. Again, they're just excuses. Yes, I'm not saying that you're not having a hard time remembering. I am having a hard time remembering. So I understand what you're saying, but these are just excuses that we make to justify why we are failing at something. Let's not do that, okay? Let's not do that at all. So, the, that's a big one. You are not focusing on the right things. I could end the video here after I explain what I mean. Um, many, many of you uh, talk to me and tell me, well, I've been studying Italian for one, two years, and then when I investigate a little, I find out uh, that you have been mainly relying on tools like Duolingo, Rosetta Stone or any other app that really focuses on vocabulary. Now, I don't want to diss completely these tools, but what I do want to point out is that those tools will never teach you a language, language. you will never become fluent with those tools because they're designed basically to teach you some vocabulary 
and you know the pronunciation of the words that you're learning. Look at how they're designed. Do you really think you're going to learn a language? Be objective. I know you're having fun. I know Duolingo is fun. You spend 10 minutes a day doing it and you feel accomplished, but really think about it. A language, it's a monster. It's a Mount Everest to climb. And what you're doing with Duolingo and Rosetta Stone, it's just like going up a little hill, you know, of this huge mountain. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'll tell you what to do in the next video, what to do with these tools. But if, if you've been focused, if you've been spending most of your language learning time using Duolingo or Rosetta Stone, you haven't been using your time efficiently. Learning a language comes down to the strategy that you have. And that's why I'm here trying to share what I believe could be a good strategy for you is the strategy that you've been using may have failed you because you've put your time into these things that kind of don't take you anywhere apart from learning a bunch of words and some basic sentences, but they don't really teach you how to think the language yourself. So really, you understand what I'm saying, right? We have an agreement here. Okay, let's move on to uh, the next thing then. You are probably obsessed with grammar accuracy and mastery. Because how do I know? You're a grown up. I'm a grown up. I make the same mistake, obviously. Oh, by the way, all the mistakes that I'm telling you are mistakes that I have made through my life of a language of language learning, and I don't make these mistakes anymore, do I? Uh, I don't know. You'll find out. Uh, you'll find out soon if I make these mistakes. You are being obsessed with grammar is counterproductive. What native speaker do you know? Think about yourself or your family speaking your native language. What native speakers are really, really that obsessed with grammar and not with being able to speak? Now, of course, some of us will get cranky if somebody doesn't spell it's the right way or your, you know, you are and your. We understand some mistakes will drive you crazy if you're into grammar. But as a speaker of a language, grammar is really not that important. Of course, you want to have good grammar, of course, blah, blah, blah. You want to have the foundation of the language. You want to have the basics of a language. You don't want to make silly mistakes, but grammar should be really the smallest part of your language learning journey. Watch the next video where I tell you the time that I believe you should be spending on grammar and you will be shocked. You will be shocked. But yeah, again, think about it. If you want to become fluent in Italian, are you really, really going to talk about grammar with Italians? Of course not, or, you know, but also is it really that important that your grammar is impeccable when all you're trying to do is communicate with these people? Believe me, it's not. As a grown up, we want to be perfect, but being perfectionist kind of gets in the way when it comes to languages. Believe. Me. So what else could you be doing wrong? Well, you're probably not learning Italian from or a language from a native speaker of that language. This is so common. I, I've ch as I check uh, podcasts, for example, for Italian, I find that 80% of them are not Italians teaching it. Like, really? Doesn't make sense. Please make sure that you're learning from a native speaker. Please do that. But the second part is actually more important because, you know, learning from a non-native can have its advantages in a certain way because if they are native of your own language, that can help you avoid the mistakes that they've been making because they speak the same language. So it's not all that bad, but you want you haven't been learning Italian from authentic speech. You probably have been using uh, either just just text, which doesn't really help because you're only reading words, uh, you're not hearing them, or you have been using scripted dialogues. You know, if you pick up any language book like the ones you see back there, they have dialogues. They're just very scripted and very unauthentic. The other day I was watching this video from another YouTuber. I can't remember who it was. It was an Italian person who speaks uh, a few languages. And he was mad because he came across his English book from last year of high school, which nearly is the 13th year. So, you know, that's the last, last year of, of school. And he's looking at the book and he's saying, look, they're telling us that to say ciao come stai, which is a basic greeting in Italian, people say, hello, how are you? And then he goes, I've never said hello, how are you? I mean, people say, how are you going? Hey, how's it going? Uh, how are you going? Oh, how are you doing? Uh, and it, it is true. 
if you rely on those old fashioned books with old fashioned scripted dialogues, you are not really learning the language that people use when you do go to the country or when you do talk to native speakers. So that's probably a mistake that you've been making. We'll fix it in the next video. Finally, look how big I made this one. You are refusing to speak. You are refusing to speak. Yeah, I know it is scary. But the reason why you feel that you are not that good at this language that you're learning is probably because of these mistakes, this one being the biggest. How can you become good at baseball if all you do is learn and read about it, but you never go out and actually hit a ball? Or how can you become a dancer if all you do is watch people dancing and you never go out dancing? It is the same for a language you have get over the fear of speaking. There's an, there's actually, I have a video that you can check out here, but it, I talk about fear of speaking. Uh, it's a quite, quite, a long, quite, quite a long video, but uh, it's gonna help you, I think. But yeah, you have to get over the fear of speaking. Find one person that you can feel less ashamed to speak to and work with that. Jump on a language, language exchange platform online and talk to people, talk as much as you can. Go out on dates. Uh, do anything you can to speak the language that you're learning. And going back to the grammar accuracy, forget about being accurate. Focus on getting the communication. Now, some purists out there, especially some Italians who watch my videos, sometimes I get comments like, <laughs> I mean, my assistant deletes any comment that doesn't, she doesn't want me to read, but sometimes I ask, ah, pass, pass, pass a few. And yeah, sometimes I get, really, really funny comments, uh, usually from Italians who don't understand the point of my channel, which is to get you to speak Italian and to do it as quickly as possible. I'm not saying that you should never look at a grammar or that you should make all mistakes. Any mistake is good. I'm saying once you start speaking, then you will eventually clean up your grammar because now you're confident and comfortable because you are speaking. You have made native friends of that native language, of the language that you're studying, and you can ask them questions, you can polish your grammar afterwards. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying ignore the grammar, but yes, if you are stuck, it's because you've been focusing on the grammar instead of focusing on the other things. And let's stop doing this. And please uh, watch the next video where I give you some tips, uh, five tips on how to change all this. Now, obviously, if you don't want to watch the video, just Take these five things that you're doing wrong and do the opposite and you'll be fine. But no, in the next video, I will tell you like a, a study plan, like a strategy on how to use your time more efficiently so that you can, within the next three months, be at a point where you don't feel like you suck at this language, okay? All right, grazie mille ragazzi. Uh, let me get rid of this. And um, in case you don't know, my name is Manu and my website is italymadeeasy.com. Grazie mille, ciao ciao. Ragazzi, per non perdere nessuna lezione di italiano, attivate le notifiche. Si fa così. Prima vi iscrivete al canale, poi fate clic sulla campana vicino al bottone rosso e selezionate questa opzione. Salvate e via. Facile, no?